In an era where the pace of technological innovation is measured in seconds, Tesla is once again rewriting the rules of the auto industry with the arrival of the 50,000-ton Gigapress at Giga Texas. This isn't just a massive machine, it's the mechanical heart of a bold ambition. To produce one cybercab every five seconds and put a million autonomous vehicles on the road as early as next year. Without the Gigapress, the only machine in the world powerful enough to compress time and precisely cast the entire cybercab frame in a single shot. The dream of mass market self driving cars would remain just that a dream. But now, with every metallic heartbeat under 50,000 tons of pressure, the future isn't far off. It's being forged, one vehicle frame at a time. The 50,000-ton Gigapress is finally being installed at Tesla's Texas factory. But setting up a machine the size of a four-story building laid on its side doesn't happen in just a week or two. The bigger the machine, the more effort it takes to install. For example, Xpeng's 16,000-ton Gigapress took 120 days to assembling and commissioning. A 50,000-ton beast could easily take twice as long. But when it's done, it will power an EV production line that could shake the entire industry. Elon Musk has emphasized that production speed and efficiency are Tesla's biggest competitive advantages. That's how the company is able to produce a Model Y every 33 seconds at Giga Shanghai. In the quest to cut costs, streamline the supply chain, and accelerate product rollout, Elon identified one key bottleneck, the car's frame. Traditionally, to create the frame of a car, other automakers would require hundreds of parts and thousands of time-consuming labor-intensive welds that are prone to errors. The labor costs and the need to deploy hundreds of assembly robots are significant. That's why Elon wanted to simplify Tesla's chassis into a single piece. This seemingly impossible idea could only become a reality if there was a machine large enough to cast the entire car body in a single press, and Musk found Idra, a company with a shared vision. Idra, which specializes in manufacturing such presses, realized that components like engine blocks and cylinder heads would no longer be necessary in 10 years when electric motors and batteries dominate. Therefore, to stay relevant and ahead of the industry, they had to take this technology to the next level, leading to the creation of the 6,000-ton, 9,000-ton, and now the 50,000-ton Gigapress. Okay. You might simply think of the Gigapress as a machine that allows Tesla to produce electric car frames faster. And while that's true, it's not the whole story. Thanks to this massive die-casting technology, over 70 individual parts that were once in a Tesla car have been replaced by a single cast piece, reducing the overall weight of the car by 10%, with the Model Y being the best example. The casting time for each part is now just 90 seconds, significantly shortening the production cycle. At the same time, the Gigapress helps Tesla cut production costs by 40% and frees up 30% of factory floor space, which optimizes expansion and operational efficiency. Yeah, you might think that such a big machine would take up a lot of factory space, but if you look closer, deploying the Gigapress means no more hundreds of assembly robots, welding areas, or many other tasks. All those steps have now been condensed into a single machine that can exert 50,000 tons of pressure. It's now just one single, precise, powerful, and flawless casting, down to the millimeter. This precision is what makes Elon Musk confident that Tesla could produce a cybercab in just five seconds, and this machine could even cast five cybercab frames at once. I, I think it's, it'll be able to produce a car ultimately in less than five seconds. Can you imagine a car coming off the line in less than five seconds? That's, that's like, whoa. With, in a single casting machine, we could do like five at a time or something, you know? Um, I'm trying to think, like, how do you scale castings? Because you got liquid metal, metal's got to cool, uh, and then you've got to automate, you know, getting all the bits and pieces off the casting so that it's usable. So, how does the 50,000-ton Gigapress work? Clearly, producing a car every five seconds is something the automotive industry has never seen before. Or rather, it seems like an enormous exaggeration. If this were to happen, it would mean Tesla is breaking its own record, as producing an electric car every 33 seconds is a speed that no automaker has been able to match. With the monolithic casting design of the Cybercab, it could become the only mass-produced car capable of achieving this. An engineer revealed that the number of structural parts in the Cybercab will only be around 80, compared to around 200 in the Model Y. 
meaning a reduction of more than 60%, which simplifies the assembly and finishing process. The operation mechanism of the 50,000-ton GigaPress is not entirely different from the 6,000-ton or 9,000-ton models. They are still presses, but with different designs and pressures. With the 50,000-ton press, the process still begins with material preparation. Tesla's vehicle frames are primarily made of aluminum, and the CyberCab is no exception. Tesla will melt new aluminum ingots, along with scrap aluminum from previous castings in a furnace heated to approximately 850 degrees Celsius. Afterward, surface impurities are removed before the molten metal is directed through a heat-retaining pipe into another sealed furnace, maintained at temperatures between 750 to 850 degrees Celsius. From what we know, the GigaPress uses a two-furnace system for processing the aluminum alloy. One furnace is used for melting powered by natural gas and operates at around 850 degrees Celsius. The other furnace is used to hold the molten aluminum and is electrically heated to maintain the temperature, as stated. The space in the furnace is filled with nitrogen gas to prevent oxidation and maintain temperature stability. In addition, operators use argon gas, rotary degassing machines, and silicon carbide filters to remove impurities larger than 25 microns. This is the material preparation stage. Next, it's time to prepare the mold. Before each cycle, the GigaPress lubricates the mold surfaces. A robot sprays about 35 milliliters of soybean oil onto the mold, creating a thin and even layer, similar to greasing a cake mold to make the product easier to separate. Then, a vacuum system is used to remove air, and the molten aluminum is introduced into the mold chamber of the die-casting machine. There, the aluminum is pumped into the mold by a high-speed piston. This piston is also lubricated with approximately 8 milliliters of oil before each casting. As we understand, the Giga 6,000-ton press that Tesla uses for the Model Y shoots over 100 kilograms of molten aluminum into a cold chamber mold at a speed of 10 meters per second. The cycle time is about 20 seconds, producing 180 complete castings per hour. That means roughly 4,000 castings can be produced each day across three eight-hour shifts. However, with the GigaPress 50,000 ton, those numbers could increase significantly. It's important to note that the force used to pump the aluminum into the mold is much lower than the force used to hold the mold in place. The GigaPress 50,000 ton doesn't use 50,000 tons to push the aluminum. It uses that immense force to keep the mold from separating when the aluminum is pumped in. This allows Tesla to cast the entire front and rear sections of the CyberCab frame in a single cycle and potentially multiple molds in the 50,000-ton press. If Elon Musk's claim of being able to cast five vehicles at once holds true, the front frame from the driver's feet forward is a single casting. The rear frame from the passenger's feet backward is another. Once the aluminum is injected, it stays in the mold until it solidifies. The casting is then ejected at around 400 degrees Celsius. After that, the rough casting is placed into a cooling tank to rapidly reduce its temperature from 400 degrees Celsius down to about 50 degrees Celsius. This quick cooling process helps eliminate some defects and enhances the material's properties. Finally, the mold opens and is cooled down to around 185 degrees Celsius before a robot thoroughly cleans it, ready for the next cycle to begin in about one to two minutes. Excess metal is trimmed off and recycled for the next melting cycle. The final product is then x-rayed to check its quality and durability. One of the biggest challenges in the casting process is keeping the mold from cracking under the immense pressure when the molten aluminum is injected. To tackle this, the machine needs to generate an incredibly strong clamping force to keep the mold tightly secured. According to Elon Musk, Tesla has developed an ultra-fast cooling system, a smart mold release mechanism, and an AI-powered automated quality control system to handle this, an integrated technology that no other automaker has tested at this scale. So I mean, we've we got, we got to jam the, the liquid metal in, cool it down real fast, like real fast. <laughs> in reality, the process inside the press involves molten aluminum being injected into the mold at high speed. That liquid metal has to perfectly and evenly fill the mold before cooling and solidifying into a sturdy block. The larger and more complex the mold, the farther the metal hock has to travel and the higher the chance of defects. 
If the injection is too fast, air bubbles can ruin the structure. If it's too slow, the metal will cool before it fully fills the mold, resulting in an incomplete product. And all of this takes place inside a massive machine, the size of a house. Musk believes that with the 50,000-ton gigapress, producing the CyberCab will be like making toys. Yeah, we're not surprised. Alongside the CyberCab, Tesla will likely apply this technology to its upcoming vehicles. These models will probably be prioritized for production in China to compete with lower-cost cars there, and they'll come to the U.S. once the trade tensions between the U.S. and China settle down. Recently, the company's product development director, Lars Moravi, shared some details about Tesla's design process and the affordable models they plan to release. He said, With the recent upgrades to the Model 3 and Model Y platforms, we've made some pretty great cars at pretty great prices, and we've added a bunch of features. Our intent is not to make a car that is any worse than any car we've ever produced in the past. The models that come out in the next months will resemble in form and shape the cars that we currently make, and the key is that they will be affordable and that you'll be able to buy one. Finally, we have the answers to questions like, what will the Model 2 look like? And, will it have a unique design? Yeah, although they haven't outright admitted that the upcoming car will be a more affordable version of the Model Y, based on what Mr. Moravi shared, it's clear that we're looking at a tiny Model Y. Moravi also pointed out that one of Tesla's biggest limitations when designing this affordable model is the existing production lines. To ensure the car meets the target price of under $30,000, it needs to be built on current production lines rather than its own dedicated line, indicating it may be less similar to the CyberCab. It seems the prototype for this car has already begun production in China. Just last month, a Chinese news outlet revealed that Tesla is making a stripped-down version of the Model Y. Meanwhile, Toyota has officially launched a new high-end electric sedan called the BZ7. This move is seen as a strategic attempt by Toyota to reclaim market share in China, where they've been gradually losing ground to the surge of local brands. With its modern design, advanced technology, and production partnership with GAC, one of China's major automakers, the BZ7 is set to be a new competitor to popular electric sedans like the Tesla Model 3, BYD Seal, and Xpeng P7 Plus. The BZ7 boasts impressive dimensions, with a length of over 5 meters, making it nearly equivalent to the Tesla Model S. Its sporty coupe design gives it a powerful yet elegant feel. Inside, the BZ7 stands out with a combination of minimalist and premium styling. The large central entertainment screen runs on Huawei's Harmony OS digital instrument cluster is sleek and minimalistic, and the wood trim combined with ambient lighting creates a luxurious atmosphere without being too flashy. The center console retains physical buttons, providing a more intuitive user experience compared to many current electric vehicles. In terms of technology, Toyota's choice of Harmony OS indicates a strong focus on connectivity and user experience, an area Tesla has excelled in. The Tesla Model 3 is well known for its constantly updated entertainment system and software, so Toyota will need to offer an equivalent experience if it wants to stay competitive. However, Toyota faces several significant challenges. While the BZ7's design and technology are appealing, Toyota's brand image in the electric vehicle space, especially in China, remains relatively weak. Chinese consumers today typically think of local brands like BYD, NIO, Xpeng, or Zeker when considering advanced electric vehicles, and Toyota is rarely top of mind. This is a major hurdle that the BZ7 will have to overcome if it hopes to succeed. In terms of performance, Toyota has yet to reveal the specific technical details of the BZ7, but based on previous electric models, many question Toyota's ability to compete with Tesla in areas like energy efficiency, charging speed, and battery technology. The Tesla Model 3, with its proprietary technology and widespread supercharging network, continues to lead in providing an overall superior electric vehicle experience. If Toyota doesn't deliver significant breakthroughs in performance, the BZ7 could struggle to convince consumers, especially those who are tech enthusiasts. Another challenge is the global strategy. While Tesla continues to rapidly expand into markets like the US, Europe, and Southeast Asia, Toyota is still primarily focusing its electric vehicle efforts on the Chinese market. If the BZ7 remains a domestic-only model without an international rollout, its ability to compete with Tesla, a truly global brand, will be limited.
For us, one of the most exciting aspects of GigaPress is the collaboration between two companies that are constantly innovating. Elon Musk shared that he drew inspiration from a Hot Wheels Model S toy sitting on his desk at Tesla's Fremont factory. Hot Wheels are made from die-cast metal or molded plastic, which is why they are cheap and mass-produced. GigaPress was inspired by that idea. This also marks the first time the automotive industry has shifted to a production model similar to electronics manufacturing, fast, streamlined, and highly optimized in space. While Tesla has been leading the way in applying GigaPress, the use of large-scale die-casting technology in vehicle production is no longer limited to Tesla. Major automakers like Ford, GM, Toyota, Hyundai, and Xpeng are starting to adopt it as well. This shows that GigaPress is becoming a key player in the modern automotive manufacturing revolution. Automakers are beginning to recognize the huge benefits that GigaPress brings. Reduced production costs, improved product quality, lower emissions, and increased output. However, achieving even greater capacities will require significant improvements in both machinery technology and manufacturing processes. Larger die-casting machines, such as 50,000-ton, 70,000-ton, or even 100,000-ton presses will be able to produce larger and more complex automotive parts, further reducing costs and improving manufacturing efficiency. Expanding die-casting capacity will not only provide cost benefits but also open up opportunities to create higher quality, more durable, and environmentally friendly automotive products. An important factor in this process is the ability to recycle aluminum within the GigaPress, which helps reduce the environmental impact. This is one of the key advancements in achieving the sustainability goals that Tesla and other automakers are pursuing. If larger die-casting machines can more effectively utilize recycled materials, it will reduce emissions and protect the environment, while also supporting the global energy transition. Furthermore, scaling up GigaPress will drive suppliers to innovate, leading to new materials and production processes. This will not only impact the automotive industry, but could also positively affect other sectors, such as machinery manufacturing, material production, and heavy industries. Software tools that assist engineers in designing and producing GigaPress castings will continue to improve, helping optimize production processes and enhance work efficiency. In conclusion, the future of GigaPress has the potential to elevate the automotive industry to a new level not only in terms of production, but also in efficiency and sustainability. With ongoing technological advancements and limitless innovation, Tesla and its partners may develop even larger GigaPress machines, with capacities ranging from 60,000 tons to 100,000 tons, transforming the automotive industry and accelerating the global energy transition.